my grandpa telling you about World War II. Uh, okay, I was drafted in 1943. And then I took my basic training in uh, Fort Lewis, Washington. And then after that, we went on mountain maneuvers in West Virginia. And then we went to New Jersey and got on a boat. And there were probably uh, 5,000 of us on this boat. And it took like three weeks to go across the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, this is a picture of me and when we graduated from basic training. Okay, now we'll go on. We Now we're waiting to board the boat in New Jersey. Like I said, it took three weeks to go across the ocean, which was a big experience. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> uh, and then when we got to England, we uh, were in the English Channel probably for another two or three weeks waiting for D-Day. And all one day we they said, this is it. So then they t we got back on this big boat and then we went over to France. And then when we got so close to Normandy Beach, then they dropped us off in the PT boats. And then when we got close to the action, they dropped us off and we were in the war. Okay, and as soon as we landed on the beach, we were in the fighting. They were, it was right there. And guys were laying all over the place, dead, and arms floating around. And, and uh, water was all bloody from blood. And the first half hour, there were only a couple of us that were alive in my in my company. Uh, and after a couple of days of that, then we finally secured the beach. And then we got to rest for a couple of days. Okay, then after we secured the beach, then we got to a town of uh, it was called St. Lo, and then there was a river, the Moselle River, <laughs> ran through this town, and me and uh, and another German, he he was real German, and I I could speak German, so then they sent us out at night to see what the enemy was doing, and then one night we stayed too long, and then we when we got back it was daylight, and then we got to a little river. And then there was a little island on this river, uh, and the Germans saw us, so then they started shooting at us. And there was a little island on there, so we got behind some trees. And then every time we tried to get out, why well, then they shot at us. So this kid that was with me, he needed a smoke. So we put our raincoats over us, and then it was just like a chimney of smoke. And then they, so then they, uh, so then they dropped some mortar shells in on us. And then one of them landed right on him. He was laying right next to me and it uh, sort of took care of him. And, and I got, uh, uh, my eye got messed up and I couldn't hear for three or four days. But I, I survived. And then we, so then we were with Patton for a while with General Patton, uh, and then nothing happened for a couple weeks. Well, I was in the hospital for a month then, but then after I went back up to the front lines, well, then we had the Germans on the run for a, probably a month. And so, I mean, then there wasn't much action because they were, they were retreating faster than we, you know, we couldn't even catch them. And then we finally got to uh, the Battle of the Bulge. And then it was real cold. It was like zero. 
And then we were in a big woods and they were just shelling this woods and everybody laying around hurt. And I said, man, it'd be nice just to get hurt a little bit, get hit in the foot or something, just to get out of the cold, get back in the hospital. And pretty soon a shell hit right up in a, right on top of the tree. And then this, and so then this big piece of shrapnel hit me in the back and it knocked me down. I was blood running all over the place. I thought I was dying and the medics came and looked at me and he said, well, if you don't get up, you'll just stay here because, you know, they were still shelling, bombing us. So I had to get up and walk probably a mile. So then a jeep picked me up and then he took me back to a field hospital. And so then they sewed up my back and they thought I'd be all right. And I said, well, every time I moved my other shoulder, there was something hurting. So then they x-rayed the other side. So that's when they found this big piece of shrapnel and how it got from one side of the shoulder over to the other, they don't know. I guess God was with me. So then they operated again and took this out and then they brought it in on a plate. Oh yeah, I forgot one thing. After I got wounded the first time, and then we were out on patrol again, uh, and I was first scout, and then the Germans, they were hiding somewhere, and then they captured me. Uh, I mean, they took my gun, and uh, I had my hands up in the air. Hende Hof, they, was, they called it. You know what Hende Hof means? No, I'm not hands talking up. to you. You know, it means hands up. And then the other scout, he left him, he left him walk me a little ways, maybe 50 feet, and then he shot the guy. Uh, I mean, that was taking me back. Of course, he killed him, and then I got my rifle, and, and we went back out on patrol. And then on, then on my piece of shrapnel, I mean, this happened later then. Uh, they don't know how it got they don't know how it got from one side of my shoulder to the other side. They said I probably should have been paralyzed, but I wasn't. Like I said, God was with me. And then I was in the hospital probably two months. And by that time, see, when you get wounded twice, then they send you home on a 45-day furlough. And then, well, I was at home, then the war ended. I have a few pictures to show you. I don't know if you can see this. Can you see that picture? That just rather one of my buddies that didn't get killed. And here's a here's a couple more. Can you see it? Yep. And that's about it. And oh, here's my purple heart. Did you get it? You get you get that when you get wounded. And then here's the here's the oak leaf cluster. Just a little thing that goes onto your purple heart. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yep. Can you see it? Yep. Okay, and then and then while I was home on the on a 45-day furlough, then the war ended over there. So then I stayed at Camp Atterbury probably a oh, month and a half, and then I had enough points, and then I got, and I got discharged. And then after I was home about a year or two, then I met my wife, Bernice. And now uh, we've been married for 52 years. Okay then, after I got discharged, we probably went together for a couple years and then we got married and we had two kids and if I wouldn't have, if I would have got killed then I, we would have never had little Casey. And I'm just happy that my grandpa made it through World War II.